And many surprising findings have come across these studies that have completely destroyed all of the hypotheses that we initiated with. For example, when we first started doing these studies, one of the things that I had postulated, not because it was my great idea, but because a lot of people have been postulating it, and in animal models there was evidence that that could be the case, that people that were addicted were addicted uh, because uh, drugs were more rewarding, more pleasurable. And uh, thus, their brain will have a much greater release of dopamine in these limbic areas when they took it. And so, that was the idea. But well, we did the studies, and consistently now, in three independent uh, investigations that we've done in our laboratory, and similar findings have been reported by others at Columbia University, we've shown exactly the opposite, which is fascinating. What we're observing is that, and we've done these studies in cocaine addicted individuals and individuals addicted to alcohol, that in these subjects, the ability of drugs to increase dopamine is actually markedly attenuated. And their subjective experience of the drug is also decreased. But what's fascinating is that this fact, almost in contradiction, um, in contrast to these decreased responses, when they take the drug, they immediately, it's almost like triggers this desire of more, of more, of more. Like, um, almost like you open the faucet and there's this, 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 this intense drive to one more drug and, and this inability to get satiated. And I, and I always try to um, understand when someone is telling me these experiences, have I ever felt that way? And I've never been addicted to anything but I am um, a very compulsive person, and I can get into stages, uh, certainly, for example, with food, certain foods I generate, and you eat um, a chocolate chip cookie, and it tastes so good that you immediately know that you want more, and you do another bite, and you already in your brain are saying, I'm going to want more. So when I think about it, this is the closest it gets. Or when you've been incredibly, incredibly thirsty, I actually, and you start to drink water, it seems like you'll need more and more and more water. Eventually, of course, you just get bloated and that's the end of the water. But in the person that's addicted, that's what seems to happen. So the reward center itself is decreased, but it triggers a response that it's abnormal, that you don't see in people that are not addicted. And uh, our imaging studies, of course, we've been trying to understand then what is driving this, this different response, even though you have less reward? Why are they generating this response? And, and what we have shown, and, and certainly others investigators have looked at that, is that you've shifted the response to the drug to a stimuli that is associated with the drug. And, and this is done through, through memory and learning, conditioning. We all know about conditioning because Pavlov taught us that if you show a dog, um, have him hear a sound when they get meat, and you do that repeatedly and repeatedly, and then one day you bring the dog and you just show the sound, that animal will salivate with the sound. There's no meat, they salivate. That's a transfer of the physiological response that initially was triggered by the meat into the sound, and that's what we call conditioning. Now, you can look inside the brain and try to understand what happens. Why is this dog salivating with a sound? It just makes no sense. Well, the learning, the brain has automatically linked the meat with the sound. So in the moment that the brain inside listens to the sound, it's predicting that the pleasure will come. It's predicting the meat. So just automatically, I've learned. The brain needs to learn in order to be prepared. And that's exactly what happens when people become addicted to drugs. They get conditioned to a wide variety of stimuli. So, for example, a person that is snorting cocaine and with a $20 bill, when they see that $20 bill, will do the equivalent of salivation, except inside their brain. And what's going on is in their brain, in expectation of getting cocaine, is releasing dopamine. So they've transferred what was a pharmacological response, a response to cocaine. An action of the drug affecting specific proteins in the brain is now triggered by observing a $20 bill. 
Now, what happens when dopamine goes up because they see the $20 bill is that that activates the motivational circuit that drives you into action. So the brain is saying, this is motivationally salient, this is relevant, remember, all of these circuits were generated for us to survive, to do behavior crucial for survival, eat, sex for procreation. So these are hardwired across evolution. So your brain is immediately automatically responding and it becomes an automatic response. So in that moment, the person desires and takes action to take the drug. They take the drug, even though the response is attenuated, they have all of these learning responses and memory that actually just automatically triggers a behavior that becomes compulsive and repetitive. And, and they cannot stop it. It's, just, it's basically when, when, they engage, when the brain engages in such a state and um, the, the normal mechanisms by which we sort of control our desires and our, and our behaviors, we, well, all of us, all of us, I think that if we are honest, on a daily basis have things that tell us, I want that, but I, I shouldn't do it. It's, it's a bad idea. For, uh, and you can think of a million reasons why it's a bad idea. And so we have to relinquish things that we want on a daily basis. How can we do that? Well, we judge, we analyze, and it's always a balance about how much we want this and how bad it is to go and do this. So dopamine actually there plays a very important role because it regulates the brain areas that are making the analysis, that are judging. Is this worth the effort? Is this worth the punishment? And in base of that, that judgment, you then stop, stop the behavior. No, more, no matter how much you want it, if your judgment is it's not worth the risk, you'll stop it. And that's also regulated by dopaminergic pathways. So when you've been taking the drug repeatedly, you basically disrupted all of these normal mechanisms that allow you to exert uh, judgment and to decide, no, it's not worth the risks. Or basically you decide, no, I don't think it's a good idea. If I take cocaine, I'll end up, my probation officer will put me in jail. You cannot stop it.